So now that we have a new movie out from Zack Snyder with Rebel Moon, I've decided to go through his entire filmography and put his movies in order ranked from my worst to my favourite. Hi, welcome back to my channel and a new video today. Hope you all had a really good New Year's and managed to enjoy some time off. I did actually plan to get this video out a little bit sooner, but sadly I came down sick this week, so it hasn't been a particularly fun start to the new year for me. So apologies if I am sounding a little bit rough in this video. But I wanted to start the new year by capping out all of my thoughts on Zack Snyder's films. And I did go back through over all of them again recently, not just because Rebel Moon was coming out but I wanted to kind of see how my opinions might have changed over the years some of his films that I haven't seen for some time and there were also a few first time viewings in here as well and I know that Zack Snyder does get a mixed response from some people his movies don't work for everyone people say that often he maybe focuses too much on the style rather than the stories and to some extent I can see where people are coming from especially with some of the movies but for the most part I would still definitely call myself a fan of his but as always please do come and join me in the comments let me know all of your thoughts on Zack Snyder which of his movies you enjoy which ones don't work for you leave all of your thoughts down below in the comment section and one last thing to clarify before getting into my list I'm only going to be talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League you know any Anyone that's familiar with his history and all of the drama surrounding the production of this movie knows how many problems there were, the studio cuts, the reshoots, multiple directors working on it. So the fact we actually ended up getting this full extended work version the way Zack Snyder intended, it feels like that's the only one that should be on the list. So just going to be talking about 10 movies here. So anyway, let's get into my ranking. So coming in at number 10 for me, sitting right at the bottom of this list, is going to be Suck a punch and this is probably the only Zack Snyder movie that I would say I actively disliked. The idea and the concept here is quite interesting but just the way it's been executed, the way the final movie turned out, it just doesn't work for me. I think that it's been designed in a way that's way too light in its tone and atmosphere, especially when you consider how dark the subject matter of this story is. It just it feels a little bit strange with its vibe. And rather than focusing on more of more of the interesting aspects of this story, it feels like the movie is centering around these great big over the top action scenes. And you know, okay, they are visually quite creative at times, but they feel very CGI heavy to me and very video game-ish and like so much slow motion and everything. And I just found myself starting to tire of the overall experience. And I know Zack Snyder did hit back at critics about his portrayal of women in the story and he tried to claim that they completely missed the point. But you can understand why people would be confused. I don't think the messaging is conveyed here in a very clear way at all. It all ends up seeming a little bit confused to me. So not a particularly good movie and not one I have any interest to go back and ever revisit. My number nine choice is going to be The Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul. So this was the animated owl film and again like with Sucker Punch the main problem here is the story and its tone just feels a bit confused to me where it's obviously been designed as a family friendly story suitable for kids but the central conflict is weird with how dark it is like the whole story involving this evil community of owls who are kidnapping children brainwashing them and then sentencing them to indefinite labor as i was watching i was like wow this is this is really dark for a kids film so that felt a little bit odd to me within this story i do think the animation is very impressive like it is all quite stunning to look at uh you know just sort of the way the scenes are framed and the detailing on the owls does look quite incredible so i have to give credit for that and i do like that it doesn't feel overly hollywood you know it's it's got a mix here of british and australian voice actors that gives it a bit more of a unique feel i think than your usual hollywood animated family friendly films but overall i just don't know if the whole experience really works and i thought they introduced way too many characters they should have focused it a little bit more on a few characters because there are multiple scenes here where there's so many different owls that all look quite similar and i was like who's that talking to who i, just, I got a little bit confused with it so it's still entertaining it's not terrible but again like with sucker punch not a movie i'm going to go back and revisit anytime soon number eight for me is going to be rebel moon sadly having the new film down this low but let's be honest it's pretty disappointing isn't it i think the critics 
music and the audience scores online are a little bit harsh. Like, I didn't feel that strongly about it. It's a two-hour fantasy adventure with good actors, good visuals, and it passed the time just fine for me. It was entertaining enough, but it's painfully unoriginal. Like, it doesn't... I didn't think it had any really... It didn't have any unique elements in there that really made it feel distinct to me where I can separate it from other sci-fi and fantasy adventure films that we've had before. There's nothing about it that makes it really stand out. It ends up just kind of coming off like a little bit of a copy and a rip-off of better films, which is a shame. And worst of all, the story and the script here just feels really simplistic to me, especially when you consider some of the other material that Zack Snyder has tackled before, like with his DC films and especially the story with Watchmen. You know, kind of complex themes, interesting story elements that give you things to talk about and think about afterwards. And Rebel Moon just doesn't have any of that. It doesn't really feel like it has any meat to it where I want to discuss the film with other people. It just doesn't have anything like that. So that was the biggest disappointment about it for me. I do think it picks up a little bit in the final half an hour. Some of the reveals in the story and having Ed Skrine as this villain I thought was pretty good as well. But for the most part it was a pretty disappointing experience. And I will watch part two but I can't say I'm counting down the days for him. Number seven for me is going to be 300. This one might be quite an unpopular pick because I know a lot, a lot of people really love 300. And don't get me wrong, I do enjoy the movie. It's this graphic novel, this comic book story brought to life in live action. And it is very unique. And I don't think at the time that I saw this I'd ever seen anything like it before. So it really impressed me the first time I watched it. And... You know, it's got a very entertaining cast that bring these characters to life. You've got Gerard Butler, Michael Fassbender, and everything like that. The movie looks amazing. Like, it does have a very cool style about it where it is impressive to watch. But to me, it's just a little bit too short on story. So where it's about these 300 men who refuse to be slaves and will fight to the death uh, in, in, and do anything they can to never be slaves and that's your story that's fine it's just it doesn't really do a lot more than that for me the movie is a series of long battle sequences one after the other you know lots of style lots of slow motion you know blood spraying in slow motion spears going through people in slow motion and it's all good fun but when I come away from it the movies above this they have a little bit more story more for me to take from it I just had a better experience with overall so I do get why people love this one and don't get me wrong I do like it but not one of my favorite movies from Zack Snyder Number six for me is going to be Army of the Dead. I can imagine for most people who are making Zack Snyder film rankings, this one would probably come quite low down on the list for whatever reason. This film just didn't work for most people. But I have to say, I really enjoyed it. I don't know if it just caught me at the right moment. I know it was towards the end of lockdown. And I saw the trailer for it, like this zombie heist movie from Zack Snyder. It's going to be 18 rated, no studio cuts, him just doing whatever he wants. And I was like, sign me up for that. That's going to be great. And I had a good time with it. I think it's an entertaining film. It's got memorable sequences. I like Dave Bautista as a leading actor. I, you know, he's great in his more dramatic roles. I love following along with him. I love the whole idea of this zombie community where they have a hierarchy and stuff like that. I thought that was pretty unique. And there's a very memorable scene involving a zombie tiger, <laughs> which was pretty cool as well. I enjoyed that. So a lot of good things about it. Don't get me wrong. There are obviously problems with it. It's way too long, like two and a half hours. It takes ages to get going as well. It's like, why did it take 40 minutes to get to the start of where they actually arrive at Las Vegas? That's a massive mistake. I think there's a lot of frustrating and annoying characters in the group as well. So I can understand to some extent if the characters weren't gelling with you, you just weren't having a good time with it. That's all fair, but... For my experience of it, whenever I watch this, I have a good time with it. At this point, I would say we're taking a bit of a step up now. These are all movies, from five onwards, are all movies that I actually really quite like. So number five for me is going to be Zack Snyder's Justice League. 
I'm actually probably one of the few people who have seen just this version of the film. I've never saw the studio cut back when it came out in 2017. Around that time, I just wasn't that into superhero movies, so I was a little bit behind, you know, with that, the Marvel stuff, everything. So I've kind of caught up with them more recently and I've had more enjoyment out of them. So I've actually only seen the proper, like, full-length cuts of both this and Batman v Superman, which is quite interesting, but... Reviewing the movie in and of itself, you know, it's very impressive. It's a, a full, detailed, very atmospheric um, superhero epic. I think the characters and the motivations behind them, the villains, how the story is fleshed out is very well developed. I think you can feel the gravity and the scale of the situation and what's going on. That's something I really liked about it. I think I'd have to do a full length review to really get into all my thoughts on it because it's such a big, such a detailed film. It's not the easiest to kind of summarise in a minute and a half here in a ranking video. But I would say the reasons that kind of hold it back before, say, Man of Steel and Batman v Superman for me is I just felt like when you've got a four hour running time, I, I felt like there were thing, there were details missing that shouldn't have been. So, for example, one of them is the the reconnection between Lois Lane and Superman. Like when she finds out he's alive and they're, and they're reunited together, I never really got the sense of what it felt like for them to be back together again. It feels like it kind of just glosses over those moments. It shows them wandering about in that field quite somber. But I never really got that feeling of like these two characters that really love each other. There's something really special there. What does it feel like to be back together? I felt like it was missing that. And the other thing is I do feel like there were some personable moments that were just missing from the film where a lot of the dialogue to me felt like it was about moving the story, the plot forward, um, you know, kind of the important stuff. But some of those more, I think it could have used some of the more natural conversations between characters at certain moments. And I felt like that was a little bit missing at times. And it could feel, or oh, it's not a good word to say, but a little bit one note at times, maybe with the way it was being done. So that was the only things that kind of hold it back for me. Don't get me wrong, it's still a great film. I really enjoyed it. And I will do a full length review for it one day, but that's really my reasons for why it doesn't come as high as Zack Snyder's other DCEU movies. So I had a hard time actually choosing between these next two, but I ultimately ended up putting Man of Steel at number four. And I don't have any preconceptions about what Superman as a character should be. I don't. I haven't read the source material. I haven't seen the previous movies. Just judging this on a film as itself, I think Henry Cavill is a really good Superman. I liked the whole conflict that's developed and built up on Krypton, where you've got his family there, and this feud with Zod, who's played by, of course, Michael Shannon, uh, who's just brilliant. So I loved everything that was going on there. And then when you move down to Earth and his relationship with the family that look after him whilst he's on Earth, I thought it was all very engaging. I thought a lot of the tragedy around it was really well built up. And the, again, as I say, the first half of this film, I think, is extremely well done. I love Amy Adams as Lois Lane as well. She's a wonderful actress, and I think having a lot of focus on her in this story really does a lot for it. And that's kind of what disappoints me a little bit about Justice League, where I feel like she didn't get anywhere near enough um, story and screen time there, which was a bit of a letdown. This film is good. I think the only thing that lets it down for me slightly is towards the third act. It gets very, very heavy on the action. And I do find this sometimes in superhero movies, when the third act gets into great big over the top CGI action for you know just so much of it for so long 20 30 minutes I start to mentally check out a bit sometimes and I felt that a bit here so I loved where everything was going and I, I don't I can't really criticize the story it's just the experience of it towards the end I just didn't find it as engaging as maybe some other films on this list so it's a very solid uh, superhero movie I really do enjoy it and it is one I will go back and watch again and again Number three for me may be controversial, but it's going to be Batman vs Superman. And to clarify, this is, as I said, the extended cut I'm talking about, the more detailed, uh, longer version. And, you know, if you compare this with Justice League and Man of Steel, this one has got more problems, I would say. If, I, if you were pointing to things that are wrong with it, this has more of them. But I think the things that this one gets right, it really gets right and really makes for a more captivating film, I think, overall. 
a lot of that is to do with Ben Affleck as Batman. I love him as an actor, and I think he does a really great job of portraying this character who's got a lot of complexities about him. He's got a dark side. You can understand his perspective on things, but I just think he did an amazing job with the role. And I like how that conflict is built between him and Superman, where these are both characters you can follow, you can understand their perspectives and why this would eventually bring them against each other. I also like a lot of the details in the first half, like where he first meets Wonder Woman, he's starting to realise there's other superheroes and everything like that. All those little things in the first half I found really engaging and interesting. Where this film has some issues, I think, is it feels like there's too much going on, too much crammed into one movie, like all of the stuff with Doomsday at the end, that really should have been in a separate movie, I think. It just ends up padding it all out with way too much stuff. Again, like the Man of Steel problem, gets a bit heavy on that CGI as well, big action CGI battling for too much of the runtime. And yeah, it does just feel crammed. I know at the time they were trying to rush to get the Justice League movie together. So it really, I think they should have done a separate Batman film first before doing this. But, you know, overall, I still think the, the good parts of it really do stand out to me. And for all of the movies within this universe that I've seen, to be honest, I think Batman v Superman is my favourite one of a lot of them. My number two choice is going to be Dawn of the Dead. I absolutely love this movie. So this one is a remake of the classic zombie movie from the 70s from George A. Romero. And whilst I could understand some people saying this doesn't have the... Uh, you know, the social commentary and the satirical edge that the original had. This sets out to just be an action horror thrill ride. And I think it just completely succeeds with what it's setting out to be. And, I mean, for a start, the opening sequence, I think, is incredible. I think from that time period anyway, I can't think of another horror movie that had an opening sequence anywhere near as intense as this. I saw this when I was very young and it blew me away when I first saw that. I love the setting for where this horror movie takes place, you know, having it in a shopping mall where you have these group of survivors just holding out whilst the rest of society breaks down around them. Something about that situation I've always thought is very exciting. And, you know, having the shopping mall where it's usually a place that's full of life, full of people, it has quite an eerie quality, I think, about it when it's very when it seems like it's isolated and you're only following this small group of characters it just has an interesting quality about it that I think really works uh, for this kind of situation so I love that as I say the characters are all very engaging very entertaining so you you're happy to kind of follow along them on the ride and it's just a very intense film you know it's short it's only about an hour and 40 it flies by it's just an intense thrill ride of an experience and I think it's one of the best zombie movies we've ever had. I think the only thing I don't like about it is when I watch it now, the end credits where they decided to add all that nasty found footage stuff on the end for kind of shock value. I don't really like that. I think the final scenes before the credits kick in is a perfect ending. Like when you've got that Tyler Bates score playing, the way the characters finally end up is a bit of a bittersweet ending. I thought that was perfect. There was no need to add all that stuff in in the credits. So if that had been taken aside, this is almost a perfect zombie film. And coming in at number one for me, my absolute favourite Zack Snyder movie is Watchmen. And out of all of his movies going over them again, this was the one on rewatch that went up the most for me. I just think this one had a very captivating and very engaging story. Of course this was based on the comic book stories from Alan Moore and he has a way of kind of intertwining these political themes within like a superhero drama and something about this mix just really works for me in live action. It did the same thing with V for Vendetta as well which is another movie that I absolutely love to death but something about this combination of having this superhero mystery and drama and all these political themes running through it as well. It's so much to talk about and discuss and think about. It's just a movie that just kept me absolutely engaged throughout the whole running time. I think as well like the story here is just brought to life 
perfectly by Zack Snyder where it's got a great soundtrack, music that really fits each of the scenes going on. I think it has a great atmosphere. I love the dynamic between these characters. You know, all the characters are very distinct. They're unique. They're engaging. And just something about their dynamic together just really gels, really works. And it's got, it's like none of ba Zack Snyder's bad habits are here. Like, you get a lot of his stylistic stuff visually, but it's not overindulgent. It's not overpowering the story. All the, the important parts of the film and the story that we want to be engaged by are there. And it's not, you know, it's not being distracted by this over-the-top action, CGI, all this kind of stuff. So I think it's really well done. It was a very, very in interesting and engaging story for me. And one that I think if it was shown now, would have more relevance today. Like a lot of the themes of nuclear war, World War Three, deterrence, ideas around that. I think those kind of talking points would have a lot more interested if it was released today. So that's something very interesting about this. But just watching these all again, this was the one that really stood out to me and easily for me comes in as my number one. So that's my ranking for all of Zack Snyder's movies. Please do as well. Come and join me in the comments and have a discussion. Let me know all of your thoughts on Zack Snyder as well as the new film Rebel Moon. I'll be interested to hear all of your thoughts on that. Also, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you've been enjoying my content. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.